WCLN 1170 Radio and Star Communications Channel 16 proudly present The We Should Know Show, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative. Now, here's your host, J.W. Simmons, as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We should know it's on the air. My name is J.W. Simmons. I'm your host. It's a great pleasure to be with you today and to be located on the Kahari building site here in Sampson County. The Kahari Indians have taken this site, mobilized it, what used to be an old school building, now is a new facility, and it carries a major name because right here we're sitting today with one of the eight tribes in North Carolina that represent Native Americans. And I want you to meet everybody individually. We're going to have a great conversation, and we're going to talk about something that's coming up in September that you're going to want to participate in. At least come by and see a few people, experience it, but it's called the powwow. So we're going to go around the room here. We've got about seven, when I say the room, we're sitting on the outside here on a stage. So, uh, Brad, I'm going to start with you, and we're going to go around and just let you kind of introduce yourself and and tell us about Brad Brewington and and go from there. Like you said, my name is Brad Brewington. I'm a member of the Cary Tribe. I've been singing and dancing for 30 plus years, and uh, I thank you for coming out today. My name is Brookie Manuel. I'm 21 years old, and I'm a proud member of the Cary Tribe. I am the Indian Education Coordinator for Clinton City Schools, and I'm very glad that you're here. Um, yes, my name is uh, Magic Gomez. I'm 37 years old. I'm employed by Presage Farms, and Bradley Bruinton is, uh, what can I say, he's one of the staples that actually got me started when I was smaller, so, you know, kudos to Brad. Uh, I'm Chris Jones. Uh, I don't need to tell you my age, but I'm a community volunteer here with the Cary Tribe. I am a member of the Cary Tribe, a proud member, and we are very thankful for you to be here. Um, I'm Cheyenne Darden. I'm 17 years old. I am the 24-25 Team Miss Cahary, and I'm a proud citizen of the Cary Tribe. My name is Talia Faircloth. I'm your 2024-2025 Miss Cahary. I'm also employed with the tribe, and I'm grateful to be here today. My name is Corey Bruinton. Uh, I am a member of Smoky River Drum Group and a volunteer with the tribe. We work a lot with the youth and trying to keep culture and songs alive. And uh, thank you for being here and talking to us. I want to thank each and every one of you to be here. We're really talking about some things today that I hope we can galvanize with the community. And, and one of those things is the importance of what you do. Not just, you know, what you may do, Brooke, at the school, but what you do and what you represent as a Kahari Indian here in this community. And one of the things that you do, and it's annually, that folks could come out and really get a, a feeling for the for the excitement, for the motivation, for the history, and that's the, the powwow, something called a powwow. So who wants to pick that up and explain to us what a powwow is and why you think that is important? <laughs> I'll, I'll pick it up. <laughs> so a powwow is a gathering of Native American people. Uh, it's usually done by community, tribes, nations, and they started probably in the early 1900s and they used to be a private thing whenever Native Americans would get together. Uh, it was a combination of different ceremonies and dances. Mm -hmm. And as a lot of assimilation, alcoholism spread through Native American country, a lot of tribes lost their culture. So the powwow was one of the biggest ways that spread pan-Indianism and a new culture for everyone to identify with as far as being Indian. Mm -hmm. So it was something that you could adopt new songs and dances 
from other people. So whenever you go to a powwow nowadays, a lot of the songs and dances that you hear come from different nations around uh, North America. And they're all shared songs and dances for us to retain that culture. And so whenever we all gather around and uh, different nations have these gatherings, we're all invited to different <laughs> ones and you go and you represent your tribe. You have different people from different tribes representing. And uh, it's supposed to be like a huge family reunion. One of the things I hear in that statement, guys, I want to toss this out to the rest of you, is that, is that I hear that the history here is deep, it's steep, it's further back than what typically folks think about as history. What does that mean to you as, as a Kahari Indian to know that you have a history that goes further than a lot of people even imagine? Because oftentimes we kind of look at the revolution or we look at these kinds of things. But, but you represent a legacy. Who wants to pick that up? I'll touch on that. Uh, it's tremendous because uh, many of our grandparents, uh, great-grandparents, um, they were forbidden to practice their culture. And for us to be able to pick it up and take it and keep it going, <coughs> Uh, we hear some of the elders just rave about how proud they are that we're able to do what they couldn't do so many years ago. So it's important for us not only to celebrate that culture, but also we dance, we sing for them, the ones that couldn't do it mm -hmm. so many years ago. That, to me, just, just listen to you guys talk, it, it says a lot about not only the the determination, the uh, resilience of what the Kahari tribe is. And then I look around the room and, it, and it's, you know, we've got two folks here with crowns on. I, I wanna hear from, from you guys because not only do you represent it, you represent it in a way that folks just cannot not see you. I mean, if, if you're out there, we see all these other pageants and this kind of thing, but it goes beyond that. So just kind of give, give us your honest feeling experiencing what you have experienced so far uh, as it relates to the, the position you're in. I'll say um, as a native and being a teen, I'm lonely in the world and, you know, not many females run in pageants. So being able to hold the honor and the title and represent my tribe and tell people about my tribe who don't know nothing about Native Americans is awesome to me and I feel very empowered and glad. Talia, give us your thoughts. Um, yeah, so these titles are new. We actually just picked them up this past weekend. <laughs> um, but, They're working for yes, this video, yes, I'll tell they you are. That. Um, But neither one of us are new to being involved. Um, we've always been involved, both of us. We've always went out, represented, um, you know, talk people about our culture. But I think now with the title, we have a bigger platform. And, you know, when we go places, people do recognize us separately because of the crown. So therefore we have more of an opportunity to take the time to teach them about our tribe. Do you think there's been a, and I'm going I'm to go to Brooke on this because she just mentioned she was involved in the education process. Have we missed a major piece of education throughout the years in our public schools to educate people about Native Americans, to educate people about the importance and the history part of that? Absolutely. I think a lot of what's in the curriculum now is misstrewed from what it should be. And a long-term goal of mine that I would absolutely love to do is create a curriculum that correctly represents not only other tribes, but the tribe in their backyard. I think as an Indian education coordinator, my goal is for them to not know just the history of other tribes, but of us, we're right here. We're still here and we're going to continue to be. It, it is, it's important, I wanna kind of zero, on, zero in on that a little bit. Do you feel comfortable in that you have the support you need administratively to make that happen, particularly in the local city schools here with Clinton, North Carolina? The, the last year, the committee that I work with has created a 
fantastic foundation from what it was. We kind of just picked it up and ran with it. And it's really all about bringing awareness to that. And I think having the support of the tribe and the people in this group have helped me tremendously. But having support of the tribe and the community, bridging the gap between the community <coughs> center and the Clinton City Schools, that process has been a lot easier than you think it'd be because it was not that way at all. So I think spreading awareness will make the admin understand it better. I think they just don't know because they're not educated on it. I want um, Magic, I wanna, I wanna go to you with, with the kind of follow up with that as well. You're out in the community a lot and talk to a lot of people. Uh, what kind of thing would you like to see as a result of this powwow as far as participation? I understand you have 2,000 plus people show up right in this area that we're in here. Uh, you've got an administrative facility here that that kind of is a, is a focal point. In fact, uh, coming up pretty soon, you're going to be putting a marker out front of this place, which is going to be a state recognition. What do you want folks to know and, and what things are you seeing that maybe need to be tweaked I, you know i'm excited to push this out through what connections i've got in media do we need to do more of this kind of thing um yes sir um surely we do um it's not that you know when we have powwows yes all of all of the native americans come around from other to other state recognized tribes and and other places in the united states as well you know but i feel like sometimes the people in our backyard, as you know, some of the, the higher ups in the city and stuff like that, you don't see many of them, you know, just, you know, if they would just take the chance to come out and see us and understand us and hear it and just be part of it and feel it, what's out here at a powwow, you know, it would, it would make it easier on Brooke or easier on anybody that works for any type of public school system that's working for the Native American people um, to understand where we're coming from. You know, we're not, we're not the type of people that's going to, complain about something you know we hey we'll, we'll take the shirt off our back and give it to you you know so we're not going to sit there and argue and complain and fuss about anything hey we we took them whippings before hey you know and sometimes we still take them but that that's what i would like to see i would like to see more of your your mayors and different people like that we're going to take a quick break folks we're going to come back and i'm going to open coming back with the fella named Brad, and we're going to talk further about this conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. Computer viruses, malware, and ransomware are out there. They're dangerous, and they can steal your identity and damage your equipment. Star Communications is now offering Protect IQ. This service adds an extra layer of protection to every device connected to your network, working quietly in the background. Star can help you protect yourself from the inside out with Protect IQ. Call Star today and take advantage of this free service when you sign up for whole home Wi Fi with Star Communications. How can your friend save you money? It's easy. Refer a relative, coworker, neighbor, or friend to Star Communications. Friend signs up for high speed internet service. Friend's new account is confirmed. Friend gives your name to our service representative as the one who referred them to Star. You receive a $30 internet credit. It's just that simple. And even better, receive a $30 internet credit for every referral that results in a new confirmed account. High-speed internet from Star Communications. Refer a friend today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're coming to you on site today with We Should Know, 421 North, right here at the administrative office building of the Kahari Indian Tribe. And it's my pleasure to be talking to a number of folks that makes a lot of things happen here with the Kahari Indians. And I want to use that, that phrase over and over again. As we come back in, and of course, as we left, we were talking about the powwow that's coming up and some things happening with that. I want to open this second segment uh, with Brad and Brad, uh, Brad Bruington, you've been on this show before, 
uh, and we talked with a fella uh, that knows a little bit about this. Um, and uh, Greg uh, Jacobs is, uh, I would say he's probably a very knowledgeable guy. And since he's listening to us off camera, I'm going to give him two thumbs up. But it, that was a great show. I had a lot of uh, good comment with that. Tell us the sense of what I can do, what folks that's listening today can do to step up and better feel and understand the Kahari tribe. Listen to us, not so much what we say to you, but just listen to us. Listen to us sing, listen to us dance. Watch how we move, watch how we're a community. That's what makes us who we are, the community. Not the fact that we're Kahari, not the fact that we're a tribe. The way we were raised, and that, that's what they need to do. That's when they will understand who we are. Brad is, Brad is one of these guys, he say, says a few words, but he's got a lot of meaning in those words. One of the things that, that I picked up on, and I want to follow that thread a moment with, with the rest of you, is that, that he indicated, look, this is not about separation. This is about inclusion, that you not only are part of the community, you just want to understand and folks to understand where and what you're coming from, from your legacy as Kahari Indians. Anybody want to pick up on that? Uh, I can. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, when Brad says that, <clears throat> as far as the community, the concept of the community is what really holds us all together. And historically, that's what held Indian tribes together, too. Mm -hmm. It's not so much of this idea of, of this idea of names or different tribal nations or anything, because historically, all we did was marry. We didn't necessarily have different names for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, all tribes are related, mm -hmm. um, and it's still like that in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. All North Carolina tribes have been intermarrying for hundreds of years, and from that, you have this statewide community. And then inside of those those different native communities, you have these smaller local communities. And uh, some of these tribal communities have two or three different communities. Um, in, in Clinton or with the Kahari, just with us, we have Shiloh, Antioch, down below Clinton, across the creek, which is where we are. Uh, so that's four different actual communities, but we're all still one people. Um, so whenever you have it, structured like that uh, it keeps the children together it keeps the parents together and then you grow into a strong community that helps helps bond it keeps that bond over the years one of the things that, that i've noticed in the conversation and you just nailed it uh, in just in my observation in a short time here talking is that, that there's a core value and belief that exists among the people mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that, that strikes me and I want somebody to pick up on this is, is there's a huge faith belief within this community there's a huge faith belief in Jesus Christ I, you know we don't back away from talking about faith this is not one of those mm -hmm. shows that we're, we're not here to offend anybody but that's critically important to you guys is it not who wants to pick up on that if, if I may Please. If I may. Please. So this is something we talk about quite a lot um, because from the other Native American communities of the nation, a lot of East Coast Native Americans are looked at oddly because we do believe in Jesus Christ. Now, as for us, the whole reason we know that we're Native American is because we went to churches together. All four of those communities I just named come from churches. As every other community in every other North Carolina uh, state recognized tribe, all of their small local communities come from church-based communities. So the only reason why we know we're even Indian is because we had to go to church together. Uh, if it wasn't for that, we would probably be assimilated just like any, everyone else. Uh, so that's a huge point when it comes to talking about Eastern Coast Native Americans, but Kohari specifically, because we have such a deep background of being Christian and holding that faith. And I think now 
in the recent years, we've started to bring back culture real hard. And now it's that mix of culture and faith that's starting to bring us together even more, I believe. Is faith a point of survivability for the Kahari Indians? Pretty big question. 20,000 foot. I know somebody's. Of course, of course it is. Without faith, um, you know, the, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And if our aim is to please God, then we have to exercise that faith to keep us together. Uh, we have to believe uh, through the hard times, difficulties. Um, we have losses in our community and uh, we, we pull together and we get through things together. And it's that faith that helps us to do that. Um, I, I know, for example, I, I attend New Bethel Baptist Church. That's mm -hmm. one of the four churches we have in this mm -hmm. community. And when there's a loss in the community from any other part, we shut down our, our services for the week. And that's to show respect for those family members and those people that have gone on, but also it gives us an opportunity to go and visit with those folks and to love on them and to be there for them. So that's a tradition that you don't find just anywhere else in the country. It's something that I feel like is special to this community. I really wanted to inject that into the conversation with the powwow because with 2,000 people on this site that we're sitting now in September, folks that don't understand these core values that each one of you and, and that folks that look a lot like you and maybe me, I know, uh, have those core values in Jesus Christ. And I think when they come here they need to understand they're coming into an environment of what you just laid out so clearly, uh, uh, Chris, is this, is this idea of somebody that cares, people that care. Um, Taylor, I want you to kind of follow that, if you will, and, and tell us as it relates to the communities, to the powwow in the larger communities that you just alluded to. How does that feel? How do you what should I expect if I say it's the first time I'm coming? Sure. When I walk onto this property, sure. I mean, two thousand people is a lot of people, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, clear. You know, when I walk in, I'm going, "Oh God, what's going on here?" You know, uh, Brad may be beating a drum or something, and I'm going, "Oh, what does that mean?" Help us kind of feel that. Right. Um, well, when we start our powwow to open it up, we start with you know a prayer. Um, either Mr. Greg or maybe the MC of the day or maybe the chief will get up here and they'll pray, you know, they'll pray for understanding a successful powwow and then you go into an honor song that, um, you know, is, is prayed for and that's, that's kind of how we open it up. And, and the opening of that speaks to, um, I guess, back magic to some of the comments that you made. That kind of speaks back to the core values again. Yeah, um, of course, like, everybody should know, like, with the opening prayer, you know, we pray the same way you do, you know, and, and that, and that should let you know right there, you're not coming in here, it's not, it's not no voodoo, it's nothing like that, you know, we're singing, we're dancing, we're having a good time, and you get, you get an extra feeling off of that. A lot of people say that after they come to a power, they say, I gotta start going in more often, you know, because it's a different feeling, um, mm -hmm. you know, within, with it, with the guys around the drum group and the girls that sing behind us, they'll tell you that's a different type of medicine. You feel it, it, it makes you feel good inside um, when you can come somewhere and there's there's no drama, there's there's nothing. It's just dancing, singing. You're seeing kids out there as young as two to three years old dancing and singing and, and just enjoying and having a good time. You know, so. Um, it speaks volumes around here to us. I mean, that is our values. You know, when we come to a powwow, that we we hold that, we we hold that true to us. Like we're not going to let you disrespect it, but at the same time, we want you to understand. It. So, so basically, what I'm hearing, Brooke, is that somebody shows up, they come through the gate, they come into the powwow, they can expect people with open arms. That, and, and there's there's not a a racial bias. There's not a bias about anything. 
but they need to expect to have and I, I like what you said that people that you know they're going to love on you they're going to appreciate you being here uh, Chris they're going to pre- appreciate everything that you're about so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment we're going to pick this up and talk about some of the aspects of that powwow ladies and gentlemen we'll be back in a moment stay tuned we should know who's on there want to thank you for being with us and we want you to tell you now if you will please to call a friend tell them to tune in as you know this show is on tv channel 16 uh star communications it's also on wcln radio uh we broadcast it three times a week it's there's a repeat just giving you the bit of information that you need to know what's happening we'll be back in one moment stay tuned Providing fewer commutes, more backyard offices, and crystal clear meetings. Providing less, uh, you froze up. And more presence in your presentations. Providing a better internet experience. Providing possible. You're out for an evening on the town. Finally a chance to relax and forget that you left your front door completely unlocked. Fortunately, you just installed a security system from Star Communications. With just your cell phone, you can check on your house, lock it down, light it up, and get back to relaxing. He forgot to put Buster in his crate. Unfortunately, we can't help with that. Security and automation from Star Communications. Call today to find out more. Welcome to Cork and Brew Roseboro, where you can enjoy your favorite coffee, fraps, smoothies, bakery items, sandwiches, and select beer and wines while reconnecting with friends and family. Sit down and enjoy the experience. Come on by and give us a try. The average American household has 17 devices connected to the internet. With more and more devices able to get online, you may need to increase your internet speed. Call Star Communications today and let us help you select the package that's right for you. Announcing the 54th Annual Kahari Powwow, Friday and Saturday, September 13th and 14th on the Kahari Tribal Grounds, located at 7531 North US 421 Highway in Clinton, North Carolina. Come out and enjoy the sights, sounds, food, and fun of this cultural celebration. The Kahari Tribe welcomes you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. J.W. Simmons here, your host. The name of the show is We Should Know. We're having a great time right here, 421 North of Clinton, with the administrative office building, the Kahari. Well, I want to, for some reason, folks, call this the Kahari Nation, the Kahari Tribe. But the conversation, guys, that we've been talking today, there's more to it, and it's deeper than sometimes you see when you just see kind of the reflection. We're talking about the powwow. We're talking about the components that make up that powwow. We're talking about the powwow being a way that you meet people, you connect with people, you celebrate with people, you you touch the common heritage that each one of you sitting here have. That legacy that goes beyond, you know, a few people sailing over here from Italy back in the 1400s and saying, oh, here's a new place. We didn't know it was there. We called, thought the planet was flat. And guess what? Something else going on. Well, it was your legacy, your people, you were part of that, that legacy of this whole continent as it's been pointed out. So I want to pick it up and, and talk about the powwow from the components of the powwow. You've got something in here called dancers. What What is that about? What is what is the dance and what's the significance of a dance? Who wants to pick that up? Brad, there are Corey. several different dances. Uh, each dance has its own meaning or representation. Mm-hmm. Of the, uh, the steps when we dance, they're supposed to be prayers. The songs are prayers for the people to dance to. Um, there's chicken dancers, men's traditional dancers, uh, women's fancy dancers, men's fancy dancers. There's an array of dancers yeah. like this. A lot of them. That are very colorful, very traditional. Uh, we respect it. We would ask that people would come to respect it. Uh, we don't allow people just to click pictures. They have to ask the dancers 
for sure regalia, which is what we have on when we dance, is, uh, you know, it's part of you. It's part of who you are, part of your family. So you just don't let anybody take pictures and, and you know, just put them all over the social media and stuff like that, unless they ask. So, so you, what I'm hearing you saying, is, you know, you take pictures, but you want it done in context. You, yes. you want that picture to be somewhat explanatory, instead of just splattering something and, yes. and here's somebody dancing with a bunch of colors on and and making noises that they, that they don't understand. You want folks to under that in con understand that in context. When I look at that, you've got head dancers. Now, is that somebody that leads a group of people? Or is that somebody that has had more experience? They lead the grand entry for the entire parallel. Which yeah. brings us to that point that I want to talk about, the grand entry. Yeah. That is, um, from what I've read and been told, that is a key part of this powwow. It speaks to what is about to happen. It has engagement with people visually and audibly. Who wants to take that on and talk a bit about what to expect if you're standing here or you're sitting somewhere and all of a sudden the grand entry starts? Does people just go quiet? What happens? Everybody's looking. Hey, I'll, ta I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, so I like always depend um, on that. Um, when when grand entry when it's grand entry time, yeah, uh, you can almost hear. Uh, a pin drop other than all the bells and everybody the dancers and, and everyone coming out but everybody stops to see because in, if you're not native and you don't go to a lot of powwows you know if you're visiting public and you don't travel powwows like we do or, or you don't go one you don't go to one in your local backyard like you're just in an array like Brad said because there's so many dancers come in at one time mm -hmm. and we don't stop the grand entry till every dancer's in so if we've got 300 dancers we've got to get 300 dancers out here in this arena and then that's when it comes to all once we get everybody in i'm talking from from the youth to the babies to i'm talking everybody elders everybody chief you know uh your flag bearers all of them have to come in the grand entry and once that grand entry is in here, then, you know, you have your veteran songs and and then we take care of everybody else and, and then everybody will disperse and then they start breaking off into, into different uh, categories and things like that. That's where the categories come in. It's, it, re it reminds me of kind of like the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, you know, it's you, you have everything goes quiet for a moment and out of respect, everybody pauses mm -hmm. and just observes. And, yep. You see, the flags you see, are in front of the head dancers. Yeah. So we bring, yeah, like Brad said, we bring, we bring our flags in. Then it's your head dancers, you know, and then it just visiting it royalty, royalty. Yeah. yeah, like people like to live. So representation the, yeah, of every of every nation, like yeah. all your all your princes from every nation and every tribe is here. <coughs> you know, if their royalty is able to make it that weekend, it's all the royalty. So you you can see crowns like. Talia that are handmade. All those crowns are handmade. It's not something that, you know, you got somebody that does diamonds and they're just putting a bunch of diamonds in a, a crown and then they send it off somewhere. Mm -hmm. This right here that Talia's wearing, those crowns that these two girls are wearing, that's handmade. That bead is put on by hand by one person. It might be three beads at a time. That's the traditional way, it's three beads at a time. Um, but now, you know, some people are more advanced in beading, so it might be. 60 or you know however they lay them like Corey he's pretty advanced so he, he lays about 50 at a time so um but yeah the traditional way is three at a time and so you think look at look at I mean everything is spelled out our names are spelled out on those that there's canoes up there I mean artwork is it's just amongst Native American people the artwork is just I say it's crazy because I mean we're just artistic people well, and, and the other thing is, is my understanding also when when you come in with those flags, one of those flags is the United States flag. It is. And so there, there's a huge representation of, of that pledge mentally is there as that flag comes in. Yeah, that, um, just just a little something for everybody to know. Um, there's more Native American people that serve in the U.S. Army than any other 
you know, um, yeah. 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 portion. And you yeah. know why? It's because this is our land. This is yeah. what we mm -hmm. fight for. We believe, you know, hey, it, it gives us everything we need, really. So we're going to protect something that's ours. Do you have a lot of um, different tribes from throughout not only just North Carolina, but the country that shows up maybe from other states and that kind of thing? And is there some assimilation in that entry part that each one of those tribes has certain identity that you can see the difference in the tribes like for example when i'm looking at your tiaras and so forth you know i, I see kahari on there well is that the kind of representation as they come in through the gate yeah. they'll have their tribal they'll have their tribal names on um, somewhere yeah, sashes, some, somewhere some sashes, sashes but yeah <coughs> different <coughs> traditional crowns yep. they might be wheat woven yeah. crowns yeah they can Different. Even with even with like your dancers, like your male dancers in certain categories, you know, like what part of the state they're from, just by the way they dance, um, or the type of regalia they have on, or maybe um, some garters that they're wearing, different things. You'll know that they're they're not from North Carolina. Like they just it's different. Brooke, I'm sitting here and, and I'm. I'm listening intently to, to what we're talking about but I've got to reflect back for a moment is, is there a way with the school system that through an educational process that this it just seems to me that this should be a learning experience for for kids in the school absolutely one of my which I was talking to Cullen um, one of our friends in the tribe we were speaking about doing a school day for before the powwow, we bring the kids out here, kind of do a grand entry, show them some of the songs, some of the dances, because yet again, it's so, so important to share and spread awareness. Even if you're just putting up flyers, if you're making an announcement, these children will learn, but if you're not giving them anything to listen to, then wh why are you expecting them to learn these things? So I think, the moment they see these things even when we do our programs at the school we'll have a mini powwow at the school and those kids love it like they love to see <coughs> the different dances they're almost entranced with our culture mm -hmm. because of how beautiful it is mm -hmm. and you have all these children asking questions afterward i have children coming up to me already asking me when the powwow is they're willing to learn you just have to give them the opportunity i, I think the thing that strikes me is this whole idea of uh, the reunion thing and the community and bringing the community together and the large aspect of that and I, and I look around this this huge property that's it's just so well kept and and it's, it's just so exciting because I, you know I, I look at this used to be Samson Community College a long time ago but now I'm looking at it and it's a major focal point here in the state of North Carolina you know that folks tend to not understand when you go by this building this is just not a building that somebody has done an excellent job painting and keeping the roof on it's taken people that are older than you but yet i look at your generation this is being ladled on you now do you feel comfortable and of course a lot of you are very young but do you feel comfortable now that the generation following you is going to be able to pick this up and move forward I think we do. Yeah. yeah. We are comfortable. We've been we've been prepared by the generations before us. I feel like and a lot of us have this this newfound outlook, especially culturally, mm -hmm. um, where we can keep carrying on the legacy of the tribe. Um, just a little history, you know, this this was the first Indian school in North Carolina. And um, before that, in the 1700s, a man from London was actually going to start a school here for the five civilized tribes of North Carolina. And a lot of people say we're remnants of that. So we're going we're to take a break. I'm, they're going to give me if I don't don't get on time here. But I want to come back. I want you to pick up on that if you if you would, Corey. That's that's important for for 
everybody to understand. And Brooke, that goes back to the education piece. It, it kind of what you just pointed out. It does go back to education. And education started that movement forward. And we're still reaching out to try to educate. This show is based on education. We'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. If you run a business, you need sales. To get sales, you need customers. To get customers, you need exposure. Let our team of experts craft and produce the perfect video ad to reach your intended audience while making the most of your advertising dollars. Call 1-800-706-6538 or visit starcom.net to contact our Star Communications production team and get your business moving to the next level. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for being with us. We're coming on the last part of the show today. Again, if you're just tuning in or if you're driving down the road and you just picked it up on your car radio, uh, we're out here at the Kahari Administrative Office Area, Training Area, Building. Uh, there's a lot of things that goes on on this property on 421 North. We're talking about the powwow that's coming up and the importance and value you can get out of that. Uh, got a bunch of folks here. Again, thank all of you for being part of this. On this last segment, we really want to get into a few things that we wanted to touch on. I want to kind of catch up on that, but we've got a lot of things to cover. I want to talk a bit about uh, this idea of the dance itself and that there's certain qualifications, I understand, that if you do things properly, you get a checkpoint, but you can also not do that dance correctly. And you could also, I guess, um, Corey, I don't know, get kicked out. I don't know. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there is uh, protocols to all powwow categories. So every dance has a different kind of box that you will fit into to fit into that category. Mm -hmm. um, within those dances, each kind of dance has a protocol. There's a certain way you're supposed to dance, a certain thing you're supposed to do during some songs. And you can pick that up if you come to the powwow. Usually the MC will talk a lot about these things. So it's very educational. Um, but yeah, our powwow in particular is a competition powwow. So a lot of these dancers will be signing up to dance against other dancers. And they're usually like family members and you know, all of us are, know each other. So it's a real healthy competition, and uh, it's a chance to win money for dancing, mm -hmm. um, which is usually you know gas money to get home, things sure. like that. So that that helps out a lot. But there's a lot of things that you can do, uh, dropping items during competition songs, or a piece of your regalia or your outfit fall off or something that you can get disqualified. You can get points docked. <laughs> But it's all during certain times of the powwow. The whole powwow isn't such. It's not under scrutiny right. the whole time. So when you get into competition side, it is. Yes, there, sir. There are things that is expected, and those expectations have to be fulfilled. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they're from a traditional standpoint. So it's not like they're just willy-nilly making rules for all these categories. A lot of these rules come from the traditional standpoint of the dance. A lot of these dances come from the 1800s, really early 1900s. Um, so when you're talking about those dances, these are pretty recent stories that uh, family members have started these mm -hmm. dances and passed these around Turtle Island to other tribes. So uh, you, you can meet people like that at these powwows and learn just so much about the different aspects of the categories, dances, different tribes. Anybody else got anything on the, the dances that we, you feel like we need to touch on that we're missing? Brooke, anything? Uh, regalia? Um, I just started powwowing last <coughs> October. Mm -hmm. That was my first time dancing. And I there were so many things that I needed to learn, but I never lost sight of why I'm doing this and who I'm doing this for. 
Um, but if one of my jingles fell off, I was dancing once and my otter fell off and that was extremely embarrassing. This was at a school show though, so yeah. I didn't yeah. <laughs> I didn't get disqualified for anything. It's because my boyfriend didn't tie it in right. Thank you, Robbie, for that. Um, but my otter fell out and I didn't even notice until after, but honestly, if I would have known it fell off, I probably would have picked it up and then stop dancing. Yeah. But um, if I were to drop my scarf, um, if beadwork fell off, like I would, I would walk off. And I think it's extremely important that you do walk off because I think it's respectful versus you dropping something and then you staying in the arena. That, that's interesting because the expectations there, but yet the person that is doing that dance knows if there's something. So a lot of times you don't necessarily have to say, uh, we're going to ask to have ask if you to step out. They just automatically go, oh, well, I messed up. It's, yes. it's deep. Um, tell them about the fair feather ceremony once a feather drops. Oh, well, yeah, so, of course, eagle feathers are held in importance to us. Uh, they're usually gifted, and a, a lot of the categories and different dances, they use eagle feathers or eagle parts of that um, on their regalia. So whenever you have an eagle feather that falls off of someone's regalia, there's you actually stop the powwow. You have to stop it, and there's a whole protocol of uh, these pickup songs and usually whenever a feather hits the ground in the arena like that, it signifies a fallen soldier. Well, so you're supposed to get a veteran that has seen combat, preferably a wounded veteran, is supposed to come <coughs> and pick up that feather after a pickup song is done. And usually a host drum will render that song. There's certain songs that are made just for that. And, um, you know, it's all under, it's all under different, uh, different nations do different things. Some people don't look at that as, as important because uh, a lot of tribes, especially when you go to travel, we go to a lot of powwows in different states, different nations. A lot of powwows are just seen as like an opportunity to make money. They're competition mm -hmm. powwows. There's no yeah. ceremony or sacredness aspect to it. Over here, it's not like that on the East Coast. Um, that for a long time this was all that we had for culture so the protocols that our elders have been taught back in the 70s and 80s we still carry on those protocols we're not going to do the new things that everyone else does um, I, I think it's that's an important piece because one of the things that was mentioned a while ago was the proportion of reality of the number of Native Americans that signed up for mil military service. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it from a statistical point of view, it was my interpretation that there was probably more Native Americans than any other culture, statistically. Is, is that, Chris, is that pretty much what I was saying? That's it, that's it. And uh, that's why when we do have our grand entries, we celebrate our veterans. Usually it's veterans who are carrying the flags or the colors. Um, and they have their own veterans dance and yep. mm -hmm. all veterans are welcome mm -hmm. to come out during that time. So that draws a lot of people that may not be native, but hey, they were in combat, they were overseas and they come in and they take part in that and it's a brotherhood in and of itself. Um, uh, Talia is a veteran and so she knows what it is to be over there and uh you know fighting for this country uh, one more reason that native people are proud of who we are is those veteran people talia thank you for your service thank you for your support absolutely so i hear i hear this this thread coming back again guys this this thread about spirituality about faith it it circles back constantly brad i mean it's it's over and over again it's always there, is it not? Yes. It's always there. <laughs> it will always be there. Um, our faith and our culture, like Corey said, we look at it as one of the same. Um, we have been told when we sing that we bring forth the spirit of the Lord. So, mm -hmm. um, we have been told that people felt, felt the Lord while we were singing, dancing. Uh, it's always gonna be there in everything we do. 
I want to touch on just I've just got a couple other things I want to touch on here and, and then you know we're going to pretty soon be coming to a, a close and we've got a uh, hopefully we're going to do a little music or or, or uh, I guess with drums and so forth but I want to kind of get this in there's something uh, that is important to speak to and that's the vendors you have a lot of folks now the vendors do they do something that is uh, important that is part of the uh, legacy of the tribes so they offer certain kinds of foods that maybe some people might go what is that I don't know well collard wraps <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah now you've got to have a collard wrap oh okay come to a powwow you've got to have a collard wrap with some pepper jelly don't leave the jelly off wow and that's very Depends. important but, <laughs> but, but, but we, and we love them but we love chicken wings and french fries too sure you know? um we're native and we have native foods that we were raised on but that doesn't mean we won't eat a slice of pizza every now and then absolutely you know? so we have something for everybody as far as those food vendors uh you're liable to see uh well you you're liable to see funnel cakes you're liable to see ice cream a lip, you know food. just every yeah. green food Taco. uh anything you can think of uh we'll have it here um mm -hmm. And, you know, some people don't like fry bread. Uh, some people don't like collards. So we've got something for everybody. Chicken. Some people don't like collards? What's up with that? If you don't like collards, you get a cabbage wrap. <laughs> oh, okay. And you'll be You're right. good to go. <laughs> They're good. Um, I'd like to pick up on that, too. Um, we, we do have a lot of food vendors, but we also have craft vendors that come. Yeah. And so the craft vendors, a lot of times that's um, other Native people from maybe other tribes or even from our own tribe. They're, you know, selling their artwork. They're selling, you know, some of the clothes that they've made or just, you know, whatever their products are. That's also a chance for them to, you know, earn income because that might be their, their way of living, but also a chance for other people that come to purchase items, mm -hmm. um, you know, something to take home, something to remember the powwow by. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we sell t-shirts, you know, uh, for the powwow, and then there's also vendors that sell other things that they can take with them. I think that's important, it's what she just said, because once you started talking about that, it just struck me. If you really want to buy Made in America, this might be the place you could do it. You know, yeah, if you yeah, really are interested. I promise, it, I promise, I promise it is. <laughs> yeah, made it, well, what do you think? I mean, it's, I promise it is. <laughs> hey, it's like magic saying it's going to be. Hey, I promise. I mean, like Talia said, when it comes to the craft vendors, um, everything's pretty much handmade, you know. And if they got handmade atop top of their vendor booth, it's handmade. Beadwork, you know, you got some silversmiths that come that actually like some of Corey's pieces, like that wampum he's got on his neck. Those, that's actually cut from <coughs> That orchestra, that, that purple, yeah, yeah. It, it's out of, it's that purple. That's You're not gonna find that at Walmart. No, no, no. You you'll find a knockoff, but you won't find that. <laughs> but that's the know. real deal. Yeah, it's the real well, deal. Well, do, do you have? And I've got to ask this question. I don't know why it just comes to my mind. But the, the, will the, if somebody there will be selling moccasins and that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. um, wow, that's I mean a lot of time. A lot of times, yeah, they'll be selling moccasins, but it won't be the ones. Won't that, be handmade. If you want the handmade, they can make them for you. Yeah, okay. a lot of time, you might a lot of time order you're going to get, what are they going to get, Brad? What are they going to get? <laughs> them Minnetonkas, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to get them shoe show specials. I yeah, promise you. Yeah. They come about right up here. They're going to come about right here. I got them in every color, boss. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, if you ask them, and you know, if you ask them, and I'm pretty sure like a lot of those people that sell those moccasins like that, they can make them. Like yeah. Brad's a maker of moccasins. Yeah, you know, he, he's a maker of everything. Really. Well, it's I mean, a craft. Yeah, it's really. A craft. And he can and he can make pretty much everything. I want to touch on something uh, quick here too. Also, it's a motorcycle ride. That's that's something that's being promoted. We got about a minute. I who wants to touch that? Um, Who's on the motorcycle? You got it. Go ahead. Well, I'll just say um, the motorcycle ride. That it's something they started a couple of years ago. Well, maybe about ten years ago. Um, and it's a, it's called a warrior ride. So it really it's in honor of veterans and, uh, you know, they take them on a route around, you know, Sampson County and then they come back through and they're paraded through before the powwow starts and then they're able to go into the circle um, once green entry is over and they kind of, you know, just 
give them their own special moment because it is to honor them. Yeah, how many do you usually have in the motorcycle? Like, a lot last year. Yeah, last year it was like what a hundred. Like, yeah, it was like a hundred and fifty something like that. This is this is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And we ain't talking. We ain't talking no little rice rockets. We talking Harley Davidson. Yeah, we're, we're talking. The we series. talking big boys. Yeah, we talking. We're talking Thunder here. Yeah, we're, we're talking. Talk, we're talking. It costs. It costs the house to get one of these bikes. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I just gotta. I gotta thank you all for for what you do. I, you know, I look at all these young faces, and I, you know, I just feel so enheartened that we got people stepping forward, and and uh, you mean so much to this community, and and you might not get told that that much, but you getting told on the show and all these people's gonna hear because I'm telling you and people respect that so as we go off today I want to I want to kind of get Brad and, and whomever has got something to to make some kinds of noises here that's going to remind us of the Harry tribe can I, can I and say, the spiritual end to that can I say a few things just before yeah, we get you got there. about 30 seconds all right it works <laughs> I'm gonna try and make it quick so when we were talking about dancing um like Chris said before and like Corey said before and and Brad probably said it up here as well we dance for our elders you know because some of those elders are not able to dance because of certain situations okay absolutely but so we dance for those elders we dance for our people a lot of people say well why you go out there and dance regardless if I got two left feet I'm gonna dance for you know somebody in my tribe because they're not able to do that you know and when they see that that brings them joy. That's their their heart. You know what I'm saying? And they're gonna always hold near that because they're gonna say, "Hey, my family member, he danced at the powwow. I know he danced for me." And then when you when you brought it back around, as in faith, faith is what kept us here. And I feel like, you know, yeah, we had we had to we had to adapt, you know, and and become one with other tribes if we were a smaller tribe. But also, faith is what kept us here. And that's why we're still here. That's why we're still in your backyard in Clinton, North Carolina. And so for all these young people that's up here, I thank them today for coming up here. And I thank you for giving us the opportunity because without these young people, you will have no Kahari tribe in Sampson County. You will have nobody sitting in your backyard that you can come to and say, hey, I know some people that know traditional ways. I know these traditional dances. I know these traditional songs. So again, I thank you for the opportunity of allowing us to speak because you're an elder to us. So um, I'm always told that elders are our bookkeepers. You know what I'm saying? And what I mean by that is you can go to a library and get a book every day and read it. But once our elders are gone, Mr. Greg and some of the others that are around here, they know a lot more than we know. So we have to sit down and listen to those guys. That's why we take, that's why we take full, you know, respect to an elder when they sit down and talk to us. So I thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for the values that you bring in. And your comments, uh, you know, at just this moment just strikes me. Um, it's, it's those core values that oftentimes we're missing in society. So as we go to close, I want to, as always, look at that camera and tell all those listeners <coughs> out there, may God bless. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. And now we're going to go into our closure with some sounds and some beats from the original and the effortless movement of the Kahari tribe. <coughs>
for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.